Good morning. Good to see you this morning. We are so happy that you're here. Um, if you're here for the very first time, don't feel overwhelmed with this, but there is a little um, sheet in your bulletin that just gives us your information so that we can let you know uh, the different ministry events that are coming up in our church, uh, but it also gives me the ability to remember your name. Um, it's difficult sometimes to remember names kind of in passing, but when you write it down, I look at it, and I look at it again and again and again, it reminds me of who you are. So I'm grateful for that opportunity to meet you for the very first time, but it would also be helpful for you as well. Uh, that information just kind of goes to our administrative assistant. She keeps that. It doesn't go anyplace else other than that. So I'm going to ask you to stand with me this morning as we sing, as our band leads us in singing this morning. Good morning, members of the Triple Town Tabernacle Choir. Are you ready to help me sing some love songs to the Savior? All righty then.
who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. Sing it. You are. It's who you are. It's who you are. I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. that's in the back on our information table. Uh, that prayer sheet has names, some that you may know, some that you may not know. And that's okay. We, um, we have a prayer ministry that goes on on Wednesday nights at 6 o'clock, and they pray through every one of these names. So if there is a, in your bulletin, there's a little white sheet of paper. When you write down your concerns for either yourself, a family member, or a loved one, a neighbor, that sheet gets put on here, but also the names get put on here, but also they're handed to, uh, and they're also, um, those who are in our prayer ministry know about them, and they pray for the people that are on there. See, we spend pr time in prayer not to make God aware of 
what's going on. That's the crazy part about God and his grace and his love. He's very aware of what goes on in your life. We, when we pray, it makes us very aware of that person, but it also makes us very aware of God's presence in our lives. So in a moment, we're going to pray, and we're going to t- I'm going to spend some time talking to God, and, and we're just going to take some time to just kind of quiet ourselves before God, and, and um, after that, we'll dismiss our kids, and we'll go to Sunday school, and we'll do our thing. So let's pray together. God, we take these moments to breathe you in and breathe you out. We take these moments to just realize that we're here to remind ourselves, but but also, God, to remind or at least show you how great you are. And God, we are grateful for how great you are, and we're grateful for how, God, that when we realize that with all the rain that was going on around us, that God, in the midst of that rain, in the midst of that difficulty that we were experiencing not just with the rain but with everything else that we've been seeing all around us that God you are present with us that God you are present in that and that God despite what we may see and what we may feel God you're our constant companion For that, God, we are so completely grateful. God, we pray this morning for the teachers, the parents, the young men and women who in that uh, Santa Fe school. We pray, God, that we as a country, we as a people, will see you at work even in that, but that God also that you would instill and enable us to have compassion. No matter where, God, we may side on the political issue that is in front of us, enable us to have the grace in harder conversations. Help us to be aware, enable our students, God, so that they may have compassion and love and grace for those who consider themselves outsiders, for those who consider themselves on the edges, for those who consider themselves not a part of a particular group, Enable our students to see and to know and to move according to the rhythm of the grace that you have for each of us to be a presence in the life of those who are hurting. Because, God, we realize that you have created us to be in relationship, and when you've created us to be in relationship, that is that supernatural, unbelievable love that you have for us. It we become that broken vessel, that broken jar of clay to love those around us. And it's through the brokenness of our lives, God, that people see that grace and that love. So God, overwhelm us, enable us, and empower us. Allow us to be a place where people can connect with you and one another. Allow us to be a place where we grow in our faith and our relationship with you and others so that, God, we can be a light in our community. We pray for our men and women, our first responders, our police, our fire, our EMS, all the men and women who every day 
see that as their mission and ministry in life. Enable them, God, as well, to have exactly the compassion and the gentleness, the love that they need to have for those around us. We pray for the men and women, God, who struggle with addiction, that, God, you would bring wholeness and healing into their lives, that, God, you would enable them to see your presence, that, God, you are there with them in the messiness of their lives, and to know that, God, you are the one, the only one, who can deliver them from that place of temptation. So, God, remind us of your goodness and grace this morning. God, remind us of who you are in this time. And, God, we pray this in your Son's name. And so, friends, we say the Lord's Prayer every Sunday, and it's going to be on the screens next to me. And it's a prayer that we say every week because it reminds us of, of who, God, who God is and his goodness and his grace. So say this prayer with me this morning. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So I'm going to ask you to stay seated for our next song. It's a song that we know and we probably remember, but it's, I love this song. And so just stay seated for this song. It's called A Mighty Fortress. It'll be on the uh, screens next to me. A mighty fortress is So, Mrs. Convery and Mrs. Biankowski have Sunday school this morning. Kids, wait a minute. Let them get back to the back door, please, before you outrun them to downstairs. I get it. So, as the kids are, uh, go ahead, kids, as they're dismissed, as they go down to Sunday school, uh, Mom and Dad, we have an uh, um, opportunity right now with our children in our community for Vacation Bible School coming up in June. At the very end of June, we'll have Vacation Bible School. And that's an opportunity for us not only to, to um, connect with our kids and tell them about the love of Jesus, but it also gives us an opportunity to do that within our community. And we normally have anywhere, depending on the night, between 50 and 60 kids. It's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. But we can't do it without your help, too. So I know it's a break. I know sometimes it's a nice little break. Send your kids to vacation Bible school, breathe for a few minutes for like two hours, and then kind of come back and pick them up a little bit later that night. It's wonderful. But it's also an opportunity for you to also see how we do ministry here. So if you have an opportunity, you want to do it, if you, do, you, know, if you have the uh, time to do it, um, 
we were asking for your help as well. So I can't wait for it to come. I can't wait for it to happen. It's Vacation Bible School. The information is in our bulletin. We have a blood drive coming up in June as well, the week before that. Uh, the information for that in your bull is in your bulletin too. And we also have our Steve Moritz band who will be uh, will have a concert for us on June 3rd at night with a little dessert time afterward. And I know they've been working hard to prepare some songs for that evening. So um, again, it's, it's an unbelievable opportunity for us to do some time together, but also to serve our community as well. So um, our ushers are, uh, I would ask them to come forward at this time for our offering this morning.
than anything Help me want the healer More than the healing Help me want the savior More than the saving Help me want the giver More than the giving Help me want you, Jesus Have you ever uh, met that person in your life who likes to one-up you? You know that person, right? Talk about the fish that you caught back when, and that person talks about the fish that they caught under harder conditions, and it's a little bit bigger than the yours. And then you talk about another fish that you caught that maybe was under more difficult circumstances, and then that person talks about the fish that they caught that was a little bit more under even worse conditions than that you were. And the stories continue to build in a way where there's this competition that happens between people where they feel the need to one-up one another in life. There's this cute little video, thank you Sue Barrel for posting it on your Facebook wall. This cute little video of this little girl who talks about that a little bit. And so listen to the truth that is there and listen to what she says in response to all that and then we'll get into the scriptures. Go ahead, Karen. I saw in a kid's my friend Jabari with Karen. You know what's worse than a Debbie Downer? A one-upper. I get a mosquito bite. She has the Zika virus. And Ebola. I tell her a boy likes me. And Sally, she has two boyfriends. Congratulations, Karen. You win at life. She's always like, no cake, thanks. I'm eating healthy. Then proceeds to eat all mine. Whatever I wear, she's like, oh my god. I think I don't need that last year. I took the best selfie. And she's like, honey, I know just the filter to fix it. Mm, thanks. Guess you got two A's. Way to brag about your double A's, girl. So sad. That reminds me. She brags about winning. So you're telling me you're number one. So I feel like number two. You're gross. I'm planning a silly vacay from you. So one up yours, Karen. It's funny, I, um, over the last couple of weeks we've been talking about who God is. And that God is gracious, that God is loving, that God pursues us, that God chooses to be with us no matter what is going on in our lives, that God is um, the one who, who saves us, forgives us, overwhelms us, and everything about this grace thing is absolutely absurd. Everything about this church thing and that god chooses to do church with us and for us to be the church not just here but out there is absolutely absurd that he would use us and allow us to be a part of that unbe unbelievable adventure that god calls us to that god calls us to be light just as much as god is I talked about last week about how that light in our community, that light in the midst of darkness, cannot be overwhelmed, extinguished, or even misunderstood. That that light needs to shine in the dark parts of light, life. And that life and light are the same, and so when we see that God is life, or that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life that God says to us, and that's supposed to compel us, by the way, to 
be like in the very dark places of life. That we're not to hoard that light, but that we're to shine that light. This week, in the final uh, message of our series, God is good. And what's so significant about this moment is that there's this psalm that is not really attributed to anyone or anything. It's not something that is said to be a part of a congregational response to life. And the author of that particular psalm purposely left it wide open so that all of us could identify with this. So Psalm 13 eliminates any opportunity that we have in our lives to one-up one another when it comes to what we're experiencing and what we're feeling in this life. That this psalm allows us to have this experience that connects to all people and that we know that God, being good, connects with those experiences within our lives. I love the psalms. I've said that to you probably numerous times. I love the psalms. I love the psalms because... Some of the psalms in there, there's a section of psalms in there that is, they're very raw, very real, and very personal. So Psalm 13, the author, oh, this is, no, it's my, it's all me. Psalms, like I said, is a very raw and very real experience that identifies with what we're experiencing, a very honest and impolite conversation that we get to have with God. That the Psalms, or especially Psalm 13, gives us the ability to say things that we normally would not say to God who is faithful good, and loving. Bono of you too wrote these words, and he, or he said these words in an interview, and this is what he said. He said, that's what a lot of the Psalms feel like to me, the blues. Man shouting at God, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? Philip Yancey wrote in one of his books, he wrote, that reading the Psalms is like looking over the shoulder of the psalmist, the author, as he's writing in his journal. Because the Psalms do not let the experiences that we are having off the hook. It refuses to cover 